is Vivian. I'm a violin teacher based in Greensboro, North Carolina. And today, this video lesson will be about the bow hold. So if you're new to the instrument or relatively new, if you're just going back and reviewing your basic concepts, which is always really great to do, the bow hold is one of the first big challenges that we come across with playing the violin. It is quite the balance of strength, but also relaxation in our hands. It's really about trusting the natural distribution of weight, um, not only in our arm and hand, but also on the bow. Let's look at our natural position of our hand. And with the violin, I have this thing that I say, and a lot of other teachers say this as well, but with the violin, even though it is an asymmetrical and unnatural instrument to play, um, we want to put a lot of effort into making it feel and look <laughs> and ultimately sound as natural as possible. So to do that with our bow hold, let's grab our right hand. This is going to be our bow hand. And we're going to shake it out for a little bit. You know, get the tension of the day <laughs> out of there. Okay, and then when we shake it out, we're going to look at it and we're going to see that our fingers are going to be really nice and round and if we position our hands so that our wrist is in neutral, this is a neutral wrist, see how it's not flexed one way or another, it's a neutral wrist. If our wrist is in neutral and our hands are in a relaxed state, you'll notice that your fingers are curved, kind of like you're holding a ball, naturally. And this is actually very close to what we want for a bowl hold. Um, you're going to spread out your fingers a little bit, make sure your pinky is curved, and your thumb is bent, and then that's your violin bowl hold. Like, it's really not that different from just your relaxed position of your hand. But we're going to get more into the mechanics of it now. <laughs> so to start, I like to start with not a knot bow because the bow, the violin bow, is uniquely shaped where it's light at the tip and heavy at the frog. And this is just because of the way it's made and the materials it's made out of. Um, and that distribution of weight can be kind of tricky to handle first um, as we're first learning the bow hold. So, take that out of the equation. Let's grab a pen or pencil. I have a pen and we're going to practice holding the bow, holding our pen like a bow. <laughs> so once again, let's shake it out. And there are two ways of forming a bow hold. This one, the like natural hold is one of them. And then I'm going to also teach you the bunny hold. If the natural one doesn't make sense to you, everybody's different. All right. So we shook out our hand. It's nice and neutral. See how it's nice and curved? Very good. We we'll always want a nice, relaxed wrist and our curved fingers. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to flip our hand over and we're going to see so that we have a palm facing up. You can see our fingers. Okay, now these middle knuckles are going to be kind of where the bow stick is going to rest. It's actually going to be between these middle knuckles and the top knuckles, okay? So between these knuckles and these knuckles, but more towards these. And what we're going to do is we're going to have our hand upright and we're going to lay our pen like this on our hand. I'm trying to get it so that you can see. Good. All right. So now our pen is laying so that it's on those middle knuckles. It kind of slanted away from you towards the um, distal part of your first finger, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna curve our fingers gently around the pen. You can help hold it with your right hand. And then we're gonna place our pinky nice and bent on that back side of the pen. We're gonna keep the other fingers curled around the pen, not soup, not like this. Again, that's introducing some tension. And we want everything to be nice and relaxed, okay? And our first finger is gonna come away from the second and third finger, from the middle fingers, like that, okay? Now, 
and you're holding the pen to help you, we're gonna tap the pinky, good, and we're gonna tap the first finger. Tap pinky, tap first finger, this is just to, just to make sure that they are feeling nice and relaxed. Okay, now that they're nice and relaxed, we are going to place our thumb. First of all, before we place our thumb, <laughs> try something with me. You can hold your pen in your right hand. Um, we're gonna make a little circle with our right hand, middle finger, and thumb, okay? We wanna maintain this circle. And um, that's gonna help us figure out where that thumb placement is supposed to be. Now, everybody's a little different. I find it most comfortable to have to still have there be a circle where the thumb is tending towards that middle finger. You see that? But it's really, if you look at it, it's really between the first finger and the second finger. Good job. So once again, all the way through, we're gonna have our hand flat, all right? We're going to lay our bow or our pen on our hand so it looks like this. Good job. Okay, now we're gonna place our pinky on the back of the stick so that our pinky is bent and our first finger is not going to be towards the middle fingers but it's going to be away but also bent everything's bent now we're going to bend our thumb let's do a little thumb bow there we go and then we're going to place that thumb so it's very close to that middle finger good job and to check check your posture you should be able to look through your hand, your bow hand, through the little hole in the center of it. If this is collapsed, if this hole is collapsed in like that, your thumb is too close to your hand and it's also a little bit tense. And can you open your palm and your thumb so that it's nice and relaxed and you can get like a couple of fingers through here? Great. You just made a bow hold. Excellent job. And now that you're comfortable with the pen bow hold, you can try moving it around. I like to stir soup. With my youngest students, I like to make silly soup where we um, make our soup with tons of different ingredients in it and we see if it would taste good. I remember my very first lessons <laughs> with my very first teacher. Um, I had a lot of fun, I was four. I had a lot of fun make stirring the soup and putting very silly ingredients in it like carrots and marshmallows so that was always a good time so you can try stirring you can try um being a train where you're pushing the bow back and forth <laughs> in a straight line good job you can cr try going up and down like a rocket this was really fun with our little ones you can try like going down to the floor and going up like a rocket <laughs> with it and we always want to make sure that our bow hold looks phenomenal see Beautiful bow hold. Ooh, we don't want this, okay? If you see this, you gotta fix it. You gotta make that thumb bow. Great, okay, so now we've made our practice bow hold. Now we're gonna graduate to the bow, okay? And I'm gonna teach you the other way to form your bow hold. If the natural way with the shaking out the hand and everything is not clicking for you, that's fine. There's another way, okay? And to do it, we're gonna make a little shadow puppet, okay? <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a bunny with our hand. The thumb is the chin, it's gonna bend and it's gonna attach onto your second and third finger, your two middle fingers, which are the little buck teeth, okay? Little bunny teeth. And then your pinky and your first finger, your pointer, are gonna be the ears. And here's your bunny. Good job. Now, the bunny is gonna eat the stick gonna eat the frog okay and a lot of beginners start with their thumb on this metal part of the bow okay so that's where we're gonna place our thumb for right now later on you'll graduate to the adult bow hold but for now our student bow hold good job and we want a little space between the first finger and the two middle fingers and a little space between the two middle fingers and the pinky. The pinky, I like to hold my pinky kind of closer to the frog, closer to the two middle fingers, but some people like to really extend it out and make sure that's on screw. Good 
you. I'm always making sure that thumb is bent. And you're gonna get used to the weight distribution in the in the um, bow because it's a little heavier down here, but light up here. If you want to get used to that, I would recommend starting your bow hold, not trying to do it this way, horizontally. This is kind of weird <laughs> for your hand. You might have a hard time maintaining this shape. So instead, point your tip up to the ceiling, and then um, you won't be working against gravity. Good job. All right. You just made your bow hold. That is excellent. And you can do the same games with your bow holds where you can go up and down, oops, <laughs> up and down like rocket ship. You can do go back and forth like a train, making sure that you keep your bow straight. You can go back and forth like a train and you can have a very special prop, a toilet paper roll. <laughs> and you can put your bow through the empty toilet paper roll and you can pretend to bow like you're a violinist already. And you can search some suit. Both ways, big circles, little circles, and the opposite direction. Very good. All right, that is all I have for you for the bowl hold. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and if you're one of my students, I will see you in our next lesson, and if not, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.